Pediatrics Geriatric Procedure. Upon completion of this chapter, you will be able to describe the fears or concerns that children in different developmental stages might have toward the blood collection process, Su list suggestions that might be appropriate for parental and healthcare worker behavior during a venipuncture or a skin puncture, identify the puncture sites for a heel stick on an infant and describe the procedure. Describe the venipuncture sites for infants and young children. Discuss the type of equipment and supplies that must be used during micro collection and venipuncture of infants and children. Discuss the use of a sensitive devices, assistive devices, infobotomy such as ultrasounds and infrared light. Explain the special precautions and types of equipment needed to collect capillary blood gases. Describe the procedures for specimen collection for neonatal screening. Define five physical and or emotional changes that are associated with aging process. Describe how a healthcare worker should react to physical and emotional changes associated with the elderly. Pediatric patients or peds patients. Collecting blood from a pediatric patient requires much clinical knowledge and training on the proper techniques. There are differences that relate to anatomy and physiology in children. Observe various techniques as they are performed by a healthcare worker experienced in pediatric phrobotomy. Practice the technique to develop the necessary skills. Develop competence in relating psychological with children of various ages and developmental stages. Performing venipuncture on young patients is technically an emotional challenging, technically and emotionally challenging for healthcare workers. Please see Table 13.1 in your textbook. Here we see a bit of age-appropriate play to help the uh, the peds patient adjust to the procedure. Preparing children and the parent. A calm, confident approach. Correctly identify the patient. Hospitalized infants usually have identification bracelets on his or her ankle. Newborns not yet named usually identified by their last name identification number. And all this will be on the identification bracelet. Children's past experience with blood collection. Develop a plan for successful blood collection. Place yourself at a child's, at a child's eye level to explain and demonstrate the procedure. And these are things that we talked about in earlier chapters of what the importance of um, effective communication, building that rapport with the patient. Um, again, I've stated numerous times that it doesn't matter if it's your first day on the job or you've been there for years. The patient is going to is automatically going to perceive you as being the expert. All right. So kids, they're not going to know you. But they're they're going to expect for you to not hurt them, okay? Again, that's why it's important to make sure that we that we know the procedure, all right? Constantly going through the steps every single day, so that way we're confident when we go in to perform venipuncture, whether it be on a adult, a geriatric, or a pediatric patient. It's not going to matter. As long as you're confident, that confidence that confidence is going to radiate off you, and that right there can change the whole dynamic, um, recalibrate the atmosphere in the room when you exude confidence. All right, see here, uh, the healthcare workers at the patient's, the patient's eye level. 
um, and she's demonstrating the procedure on the baby doll. All right, establish guidelines with children and the parent. Tell the child that the procedure will be painful. Encourage patient parent involvement. All right, please don't lie to the lie to the children. Please don't. Don't lie to anyone. All right, is this gonna hurt? Oh, you'll feel a little pressure. You might feel a little a little little sting. It'll hurt for for a little while, then it'll go away. Um. It's always good to encourage kids or entice them to um, to get them on your side. Um, offer them a sticker or candy after the fact. All right here, you see a parent consoling the child, involved in the pain management process. Psychological response to needles and pains. Children one or two years of age may have extreme reaction to painless procedure, such as taking a temperature. All right, once again, because kids are only going to be comfortable around who they who they are familiar with. They don't know you. You walk in, you start touching them, putting all types of foreign devices in their bodies. It's just a natural reaction for you for them to freak out. Again. Always put yourself in their shoes. If someone just walked in and just rammed something inside you, whether it be your ear, your eye, your nose, you know what I'm saying, whatever the case may be, you would not find that to be comforting. All right. Children ages three to five perceive pain as punishment for bad behavior. And that's because around this time, like they have probably been disciplined for like touching a hot stove or touching something that doesn't belong to them. So whenever they feel pain, they automatically associate that with punishment. Children six to 12 year olds are more likely to relate pain to a past experience. So if something's happened to them in the past, again, i.e. Um, being disciplined, that's automatically what they're gonna associate it with. Children 13 to 17 years old are more independent and embarrassed to show fear. At this time, we're going through puberty, coming out of puberty. We consider ourselves to be grown. Uh, so we don't want anyone to think that that we're kids anymore. So children in, in this age bracket will be more reluctant to show fear. Distraction techniques. Children ages three and over respond well to distraction techniques to help them cope and lessen distress. Examples of dis distractions are blowing bubbles or pinwheels, counting, reading a book, or looking at a video, listening to music, singing, or taking a gentle or talking in a gentle voice about something enjoyable. All right now. With this, there's a very, 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 very fine line. I want you all to under, understand and hear me out here. It's distraction technique. Okay, there's a there's a chance that if not done properly, you could psychologically scar a child. All right. So if the child is into, I don't know. Avengers or mermaids or whatever the case may be and you try to associate the the device or the needle With with one of those characteristics uh, With the, one of these inanimate objects and something goes wrong you have completely ruined that For that child for the duration of their life or for a good part of it because eventually I probably go right up um, so be mindful of that. Like if the kid has a favorite song, you don't want to have them singing their favorite song. We'll just try to get them to sing another song. All right. Something somewhere along those lines. All right. Room location. 
Best room location for a painful procedure is a treatment room away from the child's bed or playroom. If the child cannot be moved to a treatment room, maintain privacy by drawing a curtain between the beds and speaking in a calm manner. This is only um, for, I'm not going to say only for, this is speaking predominantly to the effect of a situation where the child is being hospitalized. If the child has to stay in the hospital for for any extended period of time, whether it be overnight, you wouldn't want to. It is strongly discouraged against performing a procedure that may cause the child harm in the room where they sleep. All right. Take them to a treatment room and then perform the procedure that that's what we're that's what we're talking about. Um, and if again the patient can't be trans uh, transported for whatever the reason may be, um, pull that curtain so that way we we shrink we shrink the space. So we're gonna talk to them in a calmer manner, and that will help. Equipment preparation for a friendly environment. Use shorter needles if possible. Keep threatening looking samples, supplies, I'm sorry, such as needles out of sight. Place goggles on face shield or face shields on after greeting the children. You don't never don't want to walk in the room and have your, your face shield on. It's, it's kind of creepy. I freak a kid out. Right. Positions for restraining the child. Hold it, holding the child may be required to ensure that the child does not move his or her limb during blood collection. Restraining techniques should be compassionate and safe and performed quickly. Right? Um, you know, kids have <laughs> have an e enormous amount of strength. Okay. Um, when a kid is stressed out, or anyone, when anyone is stressed out, like you are able to perform physical feats that you possibly wouldn't be able to perform on a regular basis. Um, so, but in this case, we definitely don't want to, like, no matter how strong the kid is, um, say you're like five, seven, the kid's. The kid's like four years old and his dad's like six, seven, two, ninety. You don't wanna you know I'm not gonna instruct the dad to lay on top of the kid to get the kid to cooperate. No, that's not fair. That's not that's not how this works. All right. Um there are certain techniques that you all will be taught um and encouraged to use when it comes to restraining the child. Those are the ones that you should refer to whenever needed. All right, supportive parent who has been properly instructed can assist with restraining while providing comfort to the child. All right, two preferred methods of restraining a child to immobilize the arm, the vertical position. Works while works well for toddlers require a child to be held on a parent's lap. Horizontal or supine position. Older child lies supine. Healthcare worker on one side of bed and parent on the opposite side of the bed. All right here is what the vertical position looks like. See the baby sitting in the parent's lap. The supine position looks like healthcare worker on one side, healthcare workers on one side, and the parent on the other side. Right. We use an ultrasound or infrared light. It's imperative patient. Patient's arm does not move as a cl uh, clinician is using direct vi visualization for cannulation with the needle. A partner is required to secure arm flat above and below intended access site for successful outcomes. Neonates and infants ages three months and younger. 
usually do not require restraint, can be managed by a healthcare worker alone. Swallowing helps comfort and upset newborn from pain or procedure. Now, let me tell you something about this swallowing thing. If you have kids, then you should already know about swallowing. If you have kids and you never swallowed your kid, I promise you right now, you miss out on I'm I'm willing to bet you miss out on a lot of sleep because you didn't know about swallowing. Uh, my daughter was born and we found out about swallowing. I promise you, I swallowed my daughter until she was two years old. All right, I just kept buying bigger blankets. Um, for those of you thinking about having kids in the, past, in the future, please, please learn to swallow your children. It, it, it makes them feel so much, it makes them feel more secure and it's extremely comfortable for them. Reminds them of being in the womb. It's the last time they felt safe. And you're gonna you're gonna be able to get a lot done. Alright. Alright. Picture here, it says this is swallowing a newborn being swallowed. But that's not it. That's not that baby's not being swallowed. Combative patients, children may become combative, kicking and thrashing if forced is used. If risk of injury to a child or healthcare worker is high, discontinue blood collection attempt and notify the nurse or physician. Okay, again, we don't want to go in here and be wrestling with a kid, having the, you know, saying the dad is saying like 6'9, 290, getting on top of the kid. No, that's. It's not cool. We're not gonna do that. Just discontinue the procedure. Say, hey, today was the, wasn't a good day. Uh, you know, Timmy, little Susie wasn't having it. Try again another day. All right, decreasing needle stick pain. Uh, a eutectic mix mixture of local anesthetics, EMLA. Um, topical anesthetic applied to skin as patch or cream, then covered with uh, transparent adhesive dressing. Uh, optimal anesthesia after one or two hours and may last as long as two to three hours. Do not use if child is aller allergic to local anesthetics. All right here, we see that taking place there. Uh, cream being applied to the hand, the EMLA, and a the clear transparent dressing being placed on the sites. Uh, an oral sucrose, twenty five percent solution of sucrose prepared by mixing. Four tablespoon teaspoons of water with one teaspoon of sugar, carefully administered by oil syringe, dropper, nipple, or pacifier. Sucrose nipples uh, given two minutes before heel stick. Its action lasts about five minutes. All right. Infants giving pacifiers or sucrose shown to be more alert during procedure, to be less fussy, and to cry for a shorter duration. All right, and again, that's that's kind of self-explanatory. Everyone knows the effects that sugar has on the body, especially with a uh, newborn baby. Saying just that that amount of sugar hitting the taste buds. Immediately going into the body, creating that 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 feeling of euphoria. Um, the kid is like, "Oh my God, this is so sweet! This is the best thing ever." Um, so there, there will be they will be um, a lot calmer. There will be more alert. They'll be less fussy because again, they taste this 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 sweetness, um, and it's going to last 
for up to about five minutes. So yeah, it's it's very it's very helpful. When uh after Venipuncture is poem, but Hill Stick is performed, the fact that you know so I can still the I can still taste this in my mouth, even though I'm crying, like that's going to help me calm down more. So you know, this is the oil sucrose is definitely recommended. Highly recommended. Oil sucrose and swallowing, you never go wrong. All right. Uh here's the use of uh the pacifier to calm the baby. All right. Uh liposomal lidocaine. Um, formerly called the E L A Max, is an is effective if applied 30 minutes before a needle stick. It is available without prescription. Alright, uh, some precautions to protect the children: PPE, gowns, gloves, mask worn. As indicated before, entering the room, remove PPE according to policy and dispose of it appropriately uh, in appropriately marked containers. Wash your hands or sanitize them. Uh, latex allergy alert sign posted on the door and or basically indicate a latex allergy or a latex alert. Uh, several brands of non tech None latex gloves should be available for use with children who have this allergy. Uh, spina bifida, uh, congenital urinary tract abnormalities, and neurological bladders are particularly sensitive to latex. All right, pediatric phlebotomy procedure. Uh, micro microcapillary skin skin puncture collect only small amounts of blood so effects of blood volume reduces are minimum yeah, if you guys think back to I believe it was somewhere around like chapter five or six where we discussed the I believe it was six the the anatomy physiology chapter where we discussed the blood volume in the in the bodies ranging from infants to children to adults that's why you definitely want to make sure that because and because babies don't have a lot of blood uh per volume that's why you want to make sure that you draw the appropriate amount you want to make sure that you go you have a flawless technique again making sure that you're comfortable at what it is that you're doing to ensure that the technique is flawless and we won't have any issues because we definitely don't want to be in there sticking babies multiple times or anything like that right uh order the test collection collect the hematology specimen first to minimize the platelet clumping chemistry specimens then blood bank specimens all right skin puncture sites Heals the most desirable site for skin puncture of infants or neonate. Use the most uh, use the most medial or lateral plantar surfaces of the heel. All right here we see the site being clean. All right, uh, the preferred puncture sites. So when it comes to the heel, just like when you perform the capillary on the foot on um, on your finger, you never go in the middle. So I was gonna be off to the sides, either to your left or either to your right. All right. Uh, do not use central area central area of infant's heel for blood collection. Fingers on infants or newborns, ear lobes, posterior uh, curvature of heel. Again, definitely never use any of these spots when dealing with a infant or a newborn. Um, heel sticks 
either to the left or the right, and you won't have any problem. You can't go wrong with that. All right, for children aged one and under, palmal surface or a distal uh, phallus of third and fourth index finger, ideally of non-dominant non hand, most frequently used. Thumb has a pulse and index finger may be more sensitive. Again, these are things that we talked about in chapter uh, chapter 11 when we were discussing capillary sticks. Same thing applies. All right, for if it's with foot uh, deformities such as club, club foot, it may be difficult to perform, to perform for bottoming procedure due to twisted uh, in wine, a downward position of the club foot and associated poor so circulation, uh, perform heel warming of foot prior to heel stick. Again, uh, heel warming is important because again, you want to get that, you want to warm the side up. Well, because when the, once the blood is warm, it's, it's, it's flowing more freely. So, um, we got that site warmed up. Once we perform the video puncture, uh, we won't spend. We don't have to spend so much time like trying to milk the site to get to get the sample. Right here, you see uh, babies with club foots. Right, heel stick procedure. Prepare and assemble supplies. Introduce yourself to the patient. Explain the procedure and use appropriate comfort techniques. Identify the patient properly, wash or sanitize the hands according to policy, then put on gloves. If required, down a gown and a mask. All right, inspect the selected area and assess it for, assess it for proper warmth. If it is cool or a blood for a, if it is cool or a blood gas specimen is to be collected, pre-warm foot with a warm wet towel or a chemical heel warming pack according to possible policy wipe heel dry after removing warm time i apologize man. moving too fast did my dendrites fire too quick so I'm like i'm stumbling over my words i apologize for that <clears throat> pre-warming the heel increases blood flow and arterializes the specimen Essential for collecting specimens for capillary blood gas analysis. Warm the site with a commercial warming pack or wrap a warm wet towel at a temperature no more than 42 degrees Celsius around the infant's foot. Encase right. towel in a plastic bag to help um, retain heat and keep patient's bed dry. Pre-warm the site for three to five minutes, depending on the institution policy. Call in advance to pre-warm the infant's heel. All right, position the baby in a subprime position with the, with the knee at the open end of, of bassinet. This position allows foot to hang over uh, lower than the torso. Improving blood flow, and just like I was saying, we finding the um, trying to find the um, a site in the arm. Let that arm hang down. Let gravity pull that blood down. Same thing we're doing here with the infants. Procedure doesn't change. You just have to. You just have to. We just uh just have to be more careful when we're dealing with with children. Right. When baby is in acceptable position for this procedure, clean incision uh, of heel with antiseptic swab. Allow heel to air dry. Do not touch incision site or allow heel to come into contact with any non-sterile item or surface. Again, the same things as how you would when you were performing any other stick, whether it be venipuncture or capillary. Once that site is clean, it cannot touch anything else. You're not going to blow on it because all the germs in your mouth are now being blown onto this clean site. All right? Contem furthermore, contaminating it. 
went. There's a baby at there. A heel stick has been performed. All right. Remove appropriate tenderfoot puncture device from its blister pack. Take care not to rest the blade. Slot in on any non-stale surface. Remove the safety clip. Once the safety clip is removed, do not push the trigger or touch the blade slot. Hold infant's foot firmly but gently to prevent sudden movement. Rise foot above baby's heart level and carefully select a safe incision site. Place blade slot surface of device flush against heel so its center point is vertically aligned with desired incision site. Mm. Ensure both ends of the device have made light contact with the skin and depressed trigger. After triggering, immediately remove the device from the infant's heel and dispose of it in the bio sharps container. Using only a dry sterile gauze pad, gently wipe away the first droplet of the blood that appears at the infection at the incision site. Taking care not to make direct wound contact with collection container or capillary tools filled to desired specimen volume. At the blood collection, gently press a dry sterile gall pad to the incision site until bleeding has ceased. This step will help prevent a hematoma from forming. Label specimen container and, ver and verify identification. Record time of collection. Evaluate the heel slight. Elevate the heel slightly above the body to ensure that the bleeding has stopped. Check infant's heel puncture site for late bleeding or inflammation. Dispose of used skin puncture device in sharps container with biohazard label. Check infant's bed for any equipment or trash left behind. Discard blood, soap, gall, sponge, grossly contaminated items, and gowns and gloves used in isolation room in biohazard waste containers. Dispose of gowns and gloves not from isolation room in the regular trash. Wash or sanitize hands after removing the gloves. Specimens should be transported to the clinical laboratory in a timely manner. Right, capillary blood gases, skin puncture, blood less desirable, contains blood from contact. Capillaries, venules, arterials, and tissue fluid. Open collection system. Specimens temporarily exposed to room air allows for a brief exchange of gas, both O2 and CO2, before selling specimen from the air. A collection of capillary blood gas testing. Um, Rotational to perform a blood collection for capillary blood gases analysis. Collect the small, co collect it from small children and babies from whom arterial punctures can be too dangerous. Collect it from lateral posterior area of heel or ball of finger. Prepare and assemble supplies. Introduce yourself to the patient, explain procedure, and use appropriate comfort techniques. Identify infant properly, warming each site according to institute procedures. Wash your hands, then put on gloves. If requires, down a, down a gown and a mask. Use hybridized safety plastic capillary tube for collections.
Insert a mini metal filing referring to as a mixer as mixing wires to help mix specimens. Specimen must be collected with no air bubbles, such can which can distort the values obtained from the specimen. Again, these are things that I've um, shared with you all throughout the collection process as it pertains to capillaries. Okay. Um, again, it, is, it came up in chapter 11 when we're doing capillary sticks. Perform the capillary skin puncture and wipe away first drop. All right, these are your metal filing, your plastic caps, the, uh, the metal. This is how it should be assembled. You're only going to do this when we're doing uh, capillary blood gases. All right, when tube is filled, seal ends with plastic caps and use the magnet to draw uh, metal fillings um, wire back and forth across the length of the tube to make specimen completely to mix the specimen completely i apologize press skin punch the site with clean gauze sponge elevate heel slightly above body to ensure that bleeding has stopped check if it's heel puncture site for late bleeding or information dispose of skin puncture uh, device in a sharps container with the bio has a label label tubes and prepare for immediate transfer to laboratory all right notify laboratory personnel of urgent blood gas testing to be performed check if it's bad for any equipment or trash left behind discard blood soaked gauze sponges grossly contaminated items and gowns or gloves used in isolation rooms in biohazard waste containers dispose of gowns and gloves not not from isolation rooms and regular trash. Wash or sanitize your hands after removing the gloves. Deliver sample immediately to laboratory. Delays of more than 15 minutes at, at room temperature or more than 60 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius will affect the results. And these things are time sensitive, so we cannot waste time. We're getting them from the patient's room to the lab. Stack. Neonatal screening. Neonatal screening important for early detection, diagnosis, and treatment of certain geriatric metabolic infectious disease. Um, blood, blood spot testing for screening is performed before a newborn is 72 hours old. Uh, prepare and assemble supplies. Introduce yourself to the parents, explain procedures, and use appropriate comfort techniques. Identify the patients properly. Fill out information on newborn screening card. All right. What your supplies look like. What your neonatal uh, screening card will look like. All right, uh, again, we're still under the collection of capillary blood for neonatal screening. Warm side according to institution procedures. Wash your hands well, then put on gloves to prevent contamination. Do not touch with hands or gloves any part of filter paper circles before, during, or after collection. Do not allow fil filter paper to come in contact with substances such as alcohol formula, water, powder, uh, anesthetic solutions or lotions circles are printed in filter paper on filter paper uh proportion of the car all right there uh was the the stick has been performed if you wipe away that first drop of blood you replace the uh instead of using a tube um to collect the blood you would simply place the the foot to the back of the uh, screening card uh, to make sure that the blood fills this entire circle, but we do not want to, but it cannot spill over into another circle. All right, clean incision site of heel with the anesthetic swab allowed to air dry. Do not touch the incision site or allow heel to come in contact with any non sterile item or surface. Uh, once puncture site is made, wipe away the first drop of blood with sterile gauze. Allow other large blood drops to form. Uh, lightly touch printed side of filter paper with blood drop and fill each printed circle on one side only. All right, that's what it looks like when you're done.
Allow the blood to soak thoroughly and completely fill the circle. If the circle does not fill entirely, wipe the heel and express another larger drop um, into a different circle. Do not add a second drop of blood to a previously used circle. Only use one side of the fill filter paper. All right? Dry blood spots on a clean, dry, flat, non-absorbent surface for a minimum of four hours. Press a stale golf sponge against the puncture site until the bleeding has stopped. Evaluate the heel above the body. Check infant's heel puncture site for late bleeding or inflammation. I want you guys to notice how I keep going through. I could easily skip these steps because everything is being repeated because the steps are still, are, are still the same. But again, I want to keep saying them because repetition is the father of learning. The more you hear them, the more you, the more you read over them yourself the more they become embedded in your memory. Dispose of used skin puncture devices and sharps container with biohazard labor. Check infant's bed for any equipment or trash left behind. Discard blood soaked gauze sponges, grossly contaminated items, and gowns or gloves used in isolation room and biohazard waste container. Dispose of gowns and gloves not from isolation rooms and the regular trash. Wash your hands after removing gloves. Complete the remaining information on a screening card so fill up so follow-up can be done if results are abnormal. Place screening card in appropriate envelope and send it to the laboratory within 24 hours. All right. Keep in mind, um, it says 24. You have to make sure you get it to the lab in 24 hours because it has to um uh, the card has to lay lay flat on a non-absorbent surf surface. For four hours. Okay. Uh, capillary blood collection. Finger sticks usually performed for children older than the age of one. May be, nece may be necessary for a child uh, has damaged veins from repeated venipuncture or a veins covered with bandages or casts. Do not perform a finger stick if, extre if extremity has um, compromised. Has Compromised circuit circulation or endomyosis or is infected. All right. Venipuncture on children used when larger quantities of blood are needed. When a vein cannot be visualized or palpated, the use of accepted uh, assisted devices such as infrared light or so ultrasound should be considered. Veins in the anticubital fossa, uh, fossa or forearm are most accessible and are chosen for most toddlers and children. Other sites used for venipuncture are the uh, medial wrist, the dorsal of the foot, uh, the scalp, and the Medial ankle, ankle. Again, uh, this is come. This always comes up. This actually has come up in the um uh, in the class where we uh we strongly encourage um encourage you all to not stick um on the forearm region. Um, definitely want you to get comfortable with um finding that vein in the in that arm and in, in the middle middle cubicle area. Um, but on, on children, it's more acceptable. It's, um, veins are smaller. So because we were kids, we're using smaller needles. So, uh, it kind of balances itself out versus, um, when you're an adult and we're using bigger gauge needles, you just don't want to run that risk of performing a venipuncture on someone's forearm um causing them cause information causing them to infiltrate causing a hematoma and things of that nature um you see here um scalp is a another recommended site for performing venipuncture um because again as a as a child don't have a lot of hair um skin is still fairly thin um so those veins you can see the veins in the in the head um more often they're more prominent um because heads are often 
it's in the bigger part of the body um, doing birth. Um, so the skin is going to be typically tighter around that that area. Um, so making it easier for veins to be more prominent. All right. The veins are like in your arm. All right. Venipuncture indicator for blood sampling for routine laboratory tests. ESR, blood cultures, cross matching, coagulation studies, drug uh, anemia levels. Do not use veins in an, in, in an extremity, an area with a with edema or infection, or if an IV line is present, avoid deep veins in a child uh, with homophilia or other bleeding disorders. All right, special equipment assistance devices such as near infrared light, infrared light highlights, hemoglobin, ultrasounds, sends high frequency sound waves through varying depths of the skin. That's infrared light looks like. You see all the veins being how prominent the veins. Well, this makes the outlines the the veins, so to speak, and say in the list. All right, um, equipment required for large guided phlebotomy, um, ultrasound probe cover for phlebotomy needle, and or long or short uh, propofol IV catheter for deeper vessels. All right, see here, uh, person here in the perform venipuncture with the assistance of an ultrasound. All right, uh, special considerations may include specimen preparation of the child and the parent assist in restraining the child, um, use of special pediatric sized needles and safety wing infusions. Special collection uh, considerations include continue if using ultrasound, cover ultrasound probe with sterile cover and visualization and visualize the vein under direct visualization guide for bottom needle or IV catheter into the vein and if you go back if you pause this and go back to that or just look in your book at figure 13 30 if you look at the ultrasound uh, probe you see that it does have a plastic cover over it Collecting blood from IV lines. Number of children receiving uh, central venous catheters, CVCs, for administration of medication and quick and painless withdrawal of blood has increased uh, has increased dramatically. Hospitalized children or infants who are undergoing IV therapy have often have poor veins. <clears throat> Excuse me. See here, baby who's uh, receiving IV treatment. Here, uh, blood being drawn, another uh, through the IV catheter. Um, heparin or saline glock blood collection. Click patient's chart. Check patient's chart for physician's order to collect blood through a heparin or saline lock. Obtain laboratory requisition and label the and labels that reflect the patient's location and test for which blood is needed. Check labels against requisition and patient's identification bracelet as described in chapter 10. Explain the test to the patient, to the parent and child, if old enough to understand. Wash your hands, down gloves, and prepare and assemble equipment and supplies next to the patient. All right, uh, identify the patient, dis disinfect the catheter injection port with the alcohol, iodine, or clioxidide swab and let dry. Uh, check the patency of the line by attaching syringe with normal saline and flushing with a small amount. All right, and this is important because um, What's happened, what could have happened, um, depending on the time of the last blood, uh, the blood sample was con uh, collected, that blood is sitting there in that, in that catheter and it's starting to, starting to get old. 
to say the least. Uh, it hasn't been stored at the proper temperature, so you don't want to just pull that blood out because that will alter the test results. So you get that saline, clean the line out, and that way you can get some, you can get a better blood sample. Attach a needleless cannula to the to the discard syringe. Insert it in into a cap of insert it into cap of the lock. Excuse me. Gently withdraw approximately two to three milliliters of fluid and blood. Remove the syringe and needle and discard in a sharp biohazard container. Insert another needleless device and syringe to collect the blood sample. When, when sufficient amount of blood is obtained, we'll draw the needle and fill the collection tubes. Clean cap and injection port of heparin lock with alcohol. Swab, then insert syringe with harponized flush solution. Inject slowly. All right, CVC blood collection. Check patient's chart for positions order to collect blood um, through a CVC. Obtain laboratory requisition and label the reflect and labels that reflect the patient's location and test for which blood is needed. Check labels against requisition and patient's identification breaklet as described in chapter 10. Explain the test to the patient and child if old enough to understand. Wash your hands and put on mask and gloves, non-latex, prepare and assemble equipment and supplies next to the patient. Stop all CVC uh, intravenous fluids, clamp all CVC access ports, open sterile 4x4 gauze, uh, gauze sponge, place it under the catheter port to serve as a sterile field. Um, let's have some options here. Option one, throw uh through injection port, clean port with iodine swab or chloroxidine swab, allowed to dry, then wipe away uh, with clean alcohol swab. Uh, aesthetically insert syringe with saline um, usage needless system, unclamp catheter, flush central line port with normal saline, remove and discard syringe and needless system access, aesthetically insert neck syringe using needless system, Withdraw enough blood to clear to clear volume of the catheter. Um, this amount will vary with different catheters. The manufacturers of the catheters specif uh, specify a flush volume to determine the discard volume. Remove. Remove and discard syringe and needleless device in biohazard waste container. Aesthetically insert next syringe using needleless system. Withdraw appropriate volume of blood for blood sample. Remove syringe and needleless system and insert blood sample into appropriate lab tubes. Option two, the catheter hub to syringe hub. If CVC is a triple um, lumen device, Use access ports closest to child, clamp catheter, then remove uh, intimate injection cap after vigorous scrubbing. Uh, connection with iodine, chloroxidine, or 70% alcohol for 30 seconds. Allow to dry, disconnect IV tubing from catheter and cover with a sterile clamp needle. Aseptically connect discard syringe and collection syringe to sterile stop lock, ensuring a tight seal attached to port. Unclamp catheter, open stop lock to the discard syringe and withdraw three to five millimeters of fluid based on catheter volume, close the port and then open the stop, the stop cork port, stop cork port, port ooh, excuse me, collection syringe and aspirate required amount of blood. Close the port and remove syringe, attach syringe with hyperonized solution to the port, gently uh, aspirate the, to clear Stop cock of air, holding syringe vertically to allow bubbles to rise, tap syringe to free any bubbles, stick, sticking it, sticking to its side. Flush catheter line with five millimeters of saline, close the port, and then open the port 
to the Herpinol solution and flush with five milliliters, reclamp the catheter and remove the stuff cox, open collection, connection site of catheter with a new alcohol pad and attach new lunar lock cap. Lure, lure, lure lock, not lunar, lure lock. I apologize. Attach the safety syringe shield transfer device to syringe and field collection tubes. Discard used items in appropriate containers. Determine the IV's fluid after infusing properly at rate set by a unit nurse. Make sure pediatric patient is in a safe and comfortable position. With the bed down, side rails, side rails up, and bedside table, and call light um, accessible to him or her. Immediately label blood specimens, indicate that, that these specimens were collected in a line draw, dispatched to laboratory as in usual manner, remove gloves and mask and wash your hands. Thank the patient and pediatric patient for uh Cooperating and depart with all remaining supplies. Do not leave anything at patient's bedside. Document um, completion of procedure and any problems. Geriatric patients. Geriatric population uses 31% um, of the nation's healthcare services. In 25 years, uh, geriatric populations will have reached over 20% uh, total in the U.S. population. And this is because of the baby boomer generation. They are, um, you can hear them being categorized now. They're not, they want you. It's very rare that you hear baby boomers. You hear them um, being referred to as the silver wave. I believe I mentioned this in um, the earlier chapter when we were talking about the generational gaps. Um, and because that was the, one of the greatest spikes in the U.S. history, now that they are all um, approaching the geriatric stage um, in their life where they will be eventually seeking um assistant living um and more medical assistance that's why you will see that 20 percent increase all right geriatrics um physical conditions such as arthritis parkinson's disease alzheimer's disease and other de debilitating disease in elderly personnel will increase Point of care testing by skin puncture because of this difficulty obtaining blood by venipuncture. All right, increased point of care testing at home, nursing homes, rehabilitation centers, and other long term care long term care facilities. All right, physical problems common in elder, older individuals: hearing loss, failing eyesight, loss of taste, smell, and feeling, memory loss. All right, normal changes with age. You guys, uh, please feel free to look over this. Uh, Jerry, uh, physical problems commonly in older individuals. Skin puncture becomes thinner. Skin tissue becomes thinner, making venipuncture difficult. Muscles become smaller, affecting angle of venipuncture uh, penetration. Increased uh, susceptibility to accidental, accidental hematoma. Increased sensitivity and allergies. Emotional problems associated with aging, loss of career, spouse, close friends, or relatives can be uh, reflected by depression, anger, and life in general. All right, again, I've spoke to you all about this numerous amounts of times, why it's important to treat everyone with respect. Um, we're all going to get old. We all have. Um, or may have some elder members in our family now. Um, so I always say, put yourself inside their shoes. It doesn't matter what type of day you're having. You got to just always stay focused on the t on the, the bigger picture um, and the task at hand. This is bigger than you. Um, because we're all going to get old, um, you should treat, again, just treat people how you want to be treated. Um, for those of you that, for those of us that may have elderly people in our family, how would you want them treated by someone? All right. Um, how would you want to be treated if you were in their shoes and you were and you were old? All right. 
um, loss of career. Like that's that's hard. I've been working for this company for X amount of years, and now you know, I I can't work anymore because of because of my age, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, that that's tough. I mean, a lot of us have probably experienced loss of job, whether you've been fired, um, maybe you lost work during this pandemic, whatever the case may be. Like it's it's tough losing your job. All right, spouse. Um, all of us have been in, in love, or at least we thought we were in love, went through a bad breakup, and we know how that affected the, affected us. Think about something on a, think about that on a much larger scale. Like, you lose your life partner. Like, y'all have been married for 50 years, all right? And then now this person is long, no longer with you. And it's saying you woke up this person for 50 years. This person knows all of your secrets, and now they're no longer here, all right? close friends can you imagine the type of the bonds that could have been formed the type of things people could have done with you know saying 20 30 40 years of friendship all right relatives all right so we now we're getting old um all my uncles aunts gone I don't have any cousins uh, I'm I'm the last of, of my mom's children what you know, said these all these things you take all these things into consideration when dealing with um our geriatric patients please all right consideration in home care blood collection extra supplies and equipment needed posit positively identified pa patient excuse me Special position of patients for vent for venipuncture use hand disinfected before blood collection. Wait for procedure puncture site to stop bleeding. Properly discard all trash and used supplies. Label specimen and place them in a leak proof container with biohazard sign. Check appropriate temp temperature for transport. Use security precautions. Document any delays um, that you have with, with specimen. And again, with this, we're speaking from the standpoint of we're doing, again, in-home blood collection. So, hey, maybe you you were running late earlier, so you made it by Mr. Johnson's house um, a little later than you normally would have or you anticipated. So now you, you're stuck in traffic trying to get back to work. Uh, these things have to be taken into consideration because, as we know, um, blood samples have a have a certain amount of time in which they're allowed to be out. They need to be clot. They they need to have um, a certain time frame for them to clot. After the clotting procedure is over with, they need to be spent down or whatever the case may be. Anything over that or under that, you know, saying will have adverse effect on the results. All right. And be mindful of all all of these things, all of these things. All right, that's chapter thirteen.